Welcome back to the channel. It's like a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to talk about the Top Don BT100 battery tester and why every technician and DIY mechanic should have one. So you could test your battery with a multimeter. So let's uh, connect this up. Switch him on. We've got 12.71 volts, 12.69 volts. So pretty good state of charge, but it doesn't really take into account anything else. Internal resistance, the amount of amperage that this battery can produce compared to its rated amperage. So with the multimeter, let's see if we can test the volt drop while the engine is cranking. Did you see the volt drop? Let's slow it down and have a look. So it dropped to 11.22 volts. But this multimeter is not exactly the fastest acting one. I mean, I've had it 20 odd years. Um, so really a multimeter is not really the way to do it. It's a very crude way of testing a battery. Like I say, we don't even know how many amps this battery can produce. So let's now unpack the BT100 and do a test with that. Okay, so there it is. Let's unpack him. Third is out the packet, it's got some quite nice sturdy looking clamps on it, they look pretty good, and it's quite small as well. Comes with an instruction manual, we're not going to read that, we're just going to see how easy it is to use straight out of the box without reading the instructions. Okay, let's run a battery test on my car and see what it says. Showing 12.5 volts on there. Let me zoom you in a bit so you can see. Right, and we've got a menu. Battery test, cranking test, charging test. Review data, you can change the language, and about. So first off, let's do a battery test. So we'll just hit enter. Right, and it wants to know the type of battery that's fitted to the car. Now I know this is an AGM. Okay, next it wants the, the rating. And I'll, if I take the camera off the tripod, I'll show you where to find that on the battery. Now, somewhere on the battery, well, there we are, 60 amp hour. There we go, 680 amps EN. So we select EN, it's already on there, that's good. And it's on 680 already, that's handy. And then we press enter. There we go. It's 53% healthy. It's, it can bang out 495 amps. It's rated at 680, but it can bang out 495. 82% state of charge, 12.49 volts, and the internal resistance is 4.63 milliohms, which is good. Okay, let's see what else we can do with it. So, come out of here. Let's do a cranking test and check our volt drop. Start engine. Nothing off. So we can see that it took 1691 milliseconds to start and the voltage drop was 11.29 volts. Ideally, you don't really want it to go below 10. 
or 9.5. And the reason is, on modern cars with all the ECUs fitted, if the voltage drops below a certain level, usually 9.5 to 10 volts, ECUs will start shutting down. If the car does actually start, you'll end up with warning lights on the dashboard, like ABS is the common one. Um, and when you read the fault codes, it will say low battery voltage can communication error because the ECU has powered itself down because there's not enough voltage to run it. So that's that. Right, let's do the uh, charging test. Please start engine, press engine, enter to continue. Increase engine speed to 2,500 RPM for five seconds. seconds isn't it or more press enter to continue and there we go 13.37 volts load 13.47 unload and a ripple test of 9 millivolts which is good the ripple test is checking the diodes, the rectifier diodes in the back of the alternator. That number needs to be quite low. So you can see from this, you get a load more information than you would just a multimeter. Your multimeter might say your battery's good because you're limited with what you can do with it. But with the BT100, it gives you a lot more information. And you could diagnose a charging system fault or a starting system fault with that tool alone. So you do the battery test, the battery comes up, comes up good. You do your cranking test, but the voltage drops. And that could mean a high resistance in the circuit due to a bad starter, bad earth, bad connection. So if you know the battery's good, but it's dragging the voltage down when you're cranking, then you're looking at a connection problem or a faulty starter motor. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a car in today with um, starting or charging or battery issue but I have got some suspect batteries that we can connect the BT100 on and see what the results are. Okay we've got this beauty here it's rated CCA which is oh, get that in frame you better see it CCA which is cold cranking amps 410 amps so let's connect this up Well, if you go back there, that's saying it's got 12.37 volts in it. Which, if you was to do a multimeter test, you'd say, oh, well, that's all right. Well, let's actually do a test on it and see how bad it actually is. It is, I think this is an AGM. And we want to go CCA. Up this way. CCA. And it's 410 amps. And there we go. It's rated at 410 amps. It can only shove out 211. And the internal resistance is quite high at 11.7 millivolts. So, you can see the health is on 26%. So there we are. We've got the voltage, but we don't have the amps. And that's going to cause you starting problems. Maybe not this time of year, but when winter comes around, you're going to have problems. Okay, let's fit this battery to my car and do a cranking test. Will it start? Will it not start? What's the results going to be? We know it's bad. 
but is it bad enough to cause a problem like now in the summer? Let's have a look, shall we? Right, so the NACA battery is fitted to the car. It is somewhat smaller than the original. Um, the only reason mine's rated at 680 amps is because the car's got stop start on it. This came off of a Hyundai, uh, what was it? Velociraptor, Velocitor, um, which the car is similar size, if not a little bit bigger. And the engine's only a, a nat smaller than what's in this. So the battery should, if in good health, should be capable of starting this engine. So let's connect up the BT100 and see what our cranking test says. Uh, menu cranking test enter start engine right. there we go the voltage is bordering on way too well. I'm surprised it actually started. I wonder if I've got any warning lights on. Let's have a look. I might have thrown some fault codes now. No, there's no warning lights on. But you could tell from the way it was cranking, it was slower than it was with the original battery, which in cold weather is pretty damn sure going to cause a problem. So there we go. 1300 milliseconds or nearly 1400 milliseconds to start it and the cranking voltage went down to 9 volts which is horrendously low so there we are a brilliant piece of kit and for less than 50 quid what's not to love about it perfect tool a must have for the DIY and the professional mechanic alike um, quickly and easily diagnose starting charging and battery problems I'll leave a link in the description to Top Don's website and uh, there'll be a link to um, Top Don's Amazon site as well where you can get it from there. I'd like to thank Top Don for sending me that and um, allowing me to do this review. And on that note, cheers for watching all and I'll see you next time. All the best.